Now, one other thing we're going to check that's been a popular request is incoming water temperature. And I think this is the biggest reason I was getting higher ice production a few months ago versus now. So here's my line. It runs underground from the pumping well over there. And I've got insulation on it, but the insulation is black, so it's probably attracting heat. We are high enough up in uh, Florida that we actually get freezing temperatures enough that can bust pipes in the winter. So I like to leave everything insulated. Now touching this up here, it's hot. So I'm getting extremely hot water inside. We're gonna go pull a couple samples and check the temperature. I think we can make a dramatic improvement out here by reflecting some heat away from this. Now here's the thing. The water I'm going to pull from outside is probably going to be hotter than what's actually making it over to the ice makers. The reason why, they only run for five seconds. I've done timed them. I've got a filter down there that's full of water plus a decent length of line. So it's going to pull some of that hot water inside after a cycle and then it's going to start cooling down to room temperature, which is actually quite hot in here by the way, but it's a lot less hot than out there sitting in the sun in the pipe. I already feel that's very hot. Keep in mind, some of this was inside in a stainless hose. So I think I'm gonna fill this up twice. I think we found our problem. I kid you on the hot, that's at 97, 98 and climbing. 98.6 degrees, wow. This, uh, this person's not running a fever. Look at the steam coming off of that, y'all. 99 degrees. There's your problem. Much cooler already, probably because it's pulling water out of the ground now that's surrounding the pipe. Ninety-two point seven. Now watch this. We'll let this run for a minute, and we're just going to get basically uh, ground temperature water. And as I'm doing this test, I'm already thinking of something that'll be really easy to do. Look at that. We're going to the seventies. Hope y'all can see that. 77.9, 77.7. We're down to 77. Our groundwater here usually comes out at 72, but due to pipes heating up outside and my well sitting out there in the sun, that temperature is gonna swing wildly. But to go from, what was it, 98.6 down to 77 degrees, that's amazing. So I've got two thought processes here. One, some people are gonna absolutely hate, but it's a really easy way to test. I'm thinking about getting some more of that plastic tubing or copper tubing or something, building a coal, sticking it in a bucket, and actually putting ice on it and making super chilled water. But that's, let's face it, that's not uh, something I want to do every day. That's just not realistic to come out here and fill up a cooler bucket with ice every single day. Um, but I'm still going to think on that. Possibly could. Possibly could. we got to see how much it increases. Here's my other thought. This is where y'all going to hate me. What if I waste a little bit of water, which we don't like doing, I understand, and I let this trickle for quite a while. What that's gonna do is constantly keep that hot water out of the pipe from just sitting there stagnant, baking in the sun, and it's gonna keep pulling in that chilled groundwater. Actually, I don't even have to do it that much. I could just do a slight drip. So now the water that's being pulled inside is 70 some odd degrees, and that's exactly what's getting injected over there, and then eventually the ice maker. So I think this is gonna be a quick way to test all right, it is our first day test of water test. And as you can see, I have left this trickling for the last 24 hours. And again, I do not recommend wasting water. I'm just trying to do a quick little test, let this trickle out, keep a steady flow of cool water coming in to see if this justifies building the coal, cooling water down. So let's see, I have been checking this water for the last couple of days. Trickling it is making a lot of a difference. It's the middle of the day right now very hot and the incoming water temp is staying at 80 degrees it's actually dropping might go in the 70s 80 on the dot so i have i've been checking for the last 24 hours it's staying anywhere from 78 to 80.
keep in mind, when I let the water sit still and bake in that pipe outside in the sun, it's been coming in up to 99 degrees. So this is just a start. I understand we want to try to get water down to 40 degrees or so. But let's see if we made any production increase keeping a steady, consistent flow of water temperature. Eight point seven seven pounds. So as of right now, that's in line with kind of what we were getting with just the two fan tests. There has been some definite swings. Okay, so I think this is time that we step back and punt. We need to run a series of tests before we go any further. Otherwise, I feel like we're wasting time. We've had two days of extremely consistent results. Eight point, what was it, six, seven pounds. I have to go back and look at the data. And today was 8.71, very close, almost identical. And very near the last test, although we did have some wild swings in the last test, had wild weather too. But cooling down the water, almost 20 degrees during the day, doesn't really be, seem to be making a difference. So let's run a quick test on hot water versus room temperature water versus chilled water in a freezer and uh, let's see if one freezes quicker than the other to kind of let us know which direction we need to go. There is a ton of people in the comments that says hot water freezes faster due to the, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the effect, but I've read up on it and a lot of people say absolutely not, chilled water is quicker. One of y'all even sent me some information out of one of the big ice manufacturer, commercial ice makers booklets. It said if you chill water from, I think it was 80 or 90 degrees down to 50 degrees, you get an 8% increase. So even the big manufacturers supposedly have tested this and are saying chilled water makes a difference. I'm not chilled, but I did drop the temperature. We're just not seeing the results in here. And it may be, it's just too small of a result, too small of a drop in temperature. Chilled water might be the way to go. Super hot water might be the way to go. We're about to find out. Let's stop this test and go start a new one. All right, so this is the easiest way I can think to test this. I have chilled water that is in the low 40s right now. I'll show that on the thermometer because that should be a roundabout temperature that I can get a mini fridge or cooler down to. Yes, getting it closer to 32 would be nice, but 40, high 30s, low 40 degree water is chilled water in my book. Most people say get it 50 or lower, consider it chilled water. I'm also going to use straight out of the tap water. We'll test this, it's probably somewhere right around 70 something, 80 degrees because some pipes are exposed outside, although it's not in the sun, but it's very hot out there today. And then I have got the hot water heater on um, and our camper is pulling the same tap water, running through the same filter instead of microwaving and everything else. I'm just gonna go grab some of the hottest water that I can get. Now I have to keep in mind here, I'm not making boiling water. That does not work for this ice test. That may work great for some of the other tests that are out there. Um, we're not trying to disprove a major theory. We're just trying to figure out what makes the best ice. This is all about ice making. So I'm gonna grab some hot water. We'll show you the temps real quick. I've got everything set up on a pan evenly. We're gonna put it in a zero degree freezer. I'm gonna check it every 30 minutes to an hour. And we're gonna see which one ices up and freezes the quickest. Okay, I've got my hot water. Now the reason we don't wanna test boiling water, again, we're not trying to disprove a major theory that's out there on the internet because I'm not gonna make boiling water to go into an ice maker. That re require a lot of uh, power usage. And I have an idea if, if hotter water, very hot water makes ice quicker and freezes quicker, I can make a solar powered um, hot water heater. I've had one of mine forever, for years, been wanting to build, and I can make something that technically would be free other than the initial cost of materials. So let's see how hot this is. And as far as, in my mind, a solar powered hot water heater, I can probably get one that could generate well over 100 degrees, well over, um, and then continue to keep most of that temperature through the night. So I hope y'all can, uh, so I hope y'all can see that, 129.9 degrees. We're just gonna call that 130 degrees. I think that's a temperature I could easily make and a outside solar powered hot water heater. So let's pour that in. So let's pour that in and that will be a significant amount different than uh, what the chilled water is. I'll show you all these temperatures real quick because I want to go get this in the freezer ASAP before things have time to cool off from room temp. 
So as I figured, we're heading right toward about 80 degrees, which is what my tap water has been coming out with exposed pipes, but it comes out of the ground around 70 degrees. 81 and a half and dropping. So 130, 81, and let's check the chilled water. Awesome, so still nice and cool. We're now in the 40s and dropping, which is again, probably what a little mini fridge can maintain continuously. My mini fridge doesn't drop much out of the mid 40s. There's 46 degrees, 45, 44, 43. So we're right around 40 degrees is where it stopped. Okay, I am putting them straight down into a zero degree freezer. I have unplugged my fans, so there is zero circulation. As you can see, they are not running, because I want to get a nice, consistent temperature across these ice trays right here. We're gonna close this up. I'm gonna start a timer, and we'll see which one freezes up first, which one freezes up last. Stopwatch has started. I know this isn't truly scientific. Again, I just want ice production. All right, so I just had to come back to the shop to grab something, thought I'd take a quick peek, and I'm already seeing results. It has been 47 minutes and 45 seconds, and we have one already starting to freeze. So I apologize for my bad shop lighting, but, if y'all can see, the cold, chilled water side, it's already got ice forming all the way around it. I know it's hard to see, but look, hear the crunch? Every one of them is starting to skim over and form ice. Look at this back here. I'm lifting ice up out of there. Tap water, no ice anywhere. Hot water, absolutely. No ice anywhere on either of these two, and ice in every single cube tray. Look, on the chilled water side. This already isn't looking promising, at least for uh, what I'm trying to accomplish here. And by not looking promising, I mean the hot water theory. All right, it's been two hours and heading right on to 10 minutes. I just had to come back in the shop again, thought I'd take a look. I think I'm gonna pull them out this time. We should see some dramatic results this far into the test. All right, again, I apologize for the lighting. It's so hard to see ice in this atmosphere, but here's the hot water side. Still water there. I can actually poke right through these, but they are starting to freeze. Tap water side, kind of the same thing. Can poke right through them. I'd say they're very similar to this side. Well, I still see just water over here on some of these. These two are very similar, tap water and hot water. All right, now there's a few that I can't get through over on the chilled water side. We're starting to make ice cubes over here. Definitely further along on freezing over here, no doubt. Now here's something worth noting with this test. We're two hours and 10 minutes in and we still don't have ice cubes and it takes nowhere near that long for an ice maker to make ice. So that shows you the efficiency of a fan speeding up the process and an ice maker mold. Uh, it's got me thinking and some of you all mentioned this, if it's taking this long for them to freeze with no air movement but mainly in plastic trays, that shows you how good the metal heat sink is or the metal tray that holds the ice in the ice makers. And some of y'all have mentioned about potentially building a heat sink off. That may be getting a little too involved for the project, but you can tell there is a huge, huge difference going with ice cubes sitting in metal tray versus plastic tray, without a doubt. I may run this test again in the future for Curiosity, kick the fans on and see how quickly it speeds up. But right now, it's looking like we're gonna be three plus hours before we get ice cubes. Um, but the whole purpose of this test was to see if chilled water will ice down and freeze quicker than hot water, and yes, absolutely it will. Although, I'm shocked to see the hot water and tap water were very similar. That explains why the me chilling down only 20 degrees in here made no difference. Looks like you've got to get as close to freezing as possible to get way ahead of having hot water there. So for my uses, hot water we're ruling out, we're gonna have to go after chilled water. All right, so it's another day later, and I promised myself I was gonna take the day off. We had plans, but now it's kind of overcast, rainy, and ruining our weekend plans. So I have been thinking, 
I want to do one more test and it really does not apply to the ice maker build itself but I have seen so many people talk about the hot water freezes faster than cold water a little bit of reading I've did up on the effect of that it always seems like the water's closer to boiling where evaporation's happening so since we're in the shop doing a little bit of science and it's such a quick test I'm going to do chilled water which won the last test by far versus hot boiling water. Now here's why I said it doesn't apply to an ice maker. I'm not going to set something up to where I'm always having boiling water go into the ice makers. That would be so energy intensive that it would wreck this build. There would just be no point in sitting out here boiling water 24-7 to go in here. My energy usage would go through the roof for that. But since we're doing a little bit of science, like I said it's a quick test, let's check that out and I'll tell you about where we're heading with this video. So excuse my messy shot. I have had chilled water going on for days. This is straight out of the tap, our water right here. And some of y'all are probably looking at this going, hold up, you have a mini fridge out here? That's the whole reason I showed that. Yes, and that's eventually where we're heading on how can we use this mini fridge if chilled water truly gives us the results that I'm hoping it will. So I have water over there boiling right now, or getting close to boiling. We'll talk real quick while I'm waiting on that to get to a full rolling bowl. So here's the plan moving forward. If this chilled water shows the results that I'm hoping we're gonna build a quick test rig, the ultimate plan is to go get a copper coil, figure out how to run it through my mini fridge and maybe move my mini fridge right beside this so I still get full use of it, but I get chilled water that goes into it, chills down in that copper coil, comes right out into this. Since it's equipment that I already have, but we have to see good increasing results before one, I'll go spend the money on copper that's very expensive right now, and two, potentially damage my mini fridge trying to figure out how to run lines into that. So that's why a quick test is in order. That's why we're making this video to determine our path moving forward. Let's go check on the water. All right, so again, excuse the shop. We're out here doing science. We are not making a big, beautiful background and studio here for these videos. We're on a budget. And as y'all can see, I am at a full boil right here. So I'm gonna go set the camera up. We're gonna grab this, pour it straight into the ice tray and do some quick, probably 30 minute tests to see which freezes faster. Chilled water, which is just above freezing, mini fridge temps, probably the high 30s, low 40s, or boiling water. And even though the chilled water won the last test, my gut says boiling water is gonna win this test due to that evaporation effect. All right, so I just have standard ice tray cube holders. I've marked one for H for the hot water. We're gonna leave the other one unmarked for chilled water. We'll go ahead and fill that one up, and I'll bring the boiling water over, pour it in. These both are the same exact temp, been sitting in the room the same amount of time as far as the trays go. I'm probably about to make a heck of a mess. Yep. Okay, just took it off. Had a full rolling bowl, you see the steam coming out, the evaporation that's happening. All right, those look to the eye almost identical on how they're filled, which is just what I want. I'm going to unplug the fans in the freezer so we just get a nice even temperature. The freezer is set to zero degrees. All right. And here we are, hot side, cold side. Let's close this up and check on them in 30 minutes. All right, so it's been just over 30 minutes because I forgot to start the stopwatch about four minutes into the test. We already have results. So I must say I'm a little surprised by this one. Again, I apologize for the lighting in the shop. I'm about to start upgrading the lighting in here so we can run better tests and better projects. It's gonna be so hard to tell because the ice is clear but there is already, look, big chunks of ice skimming over <clears throat> in several spots down here on this end too. That's all ice, you can hear it. It's actually freezing over even quicker than it was yesterday. 
Here's the kicker. That's the chilled water side. This is the boiling water side. I really thought, due to evaporation, the boiling water side is gonna make the biggest difference. Now, y'all may see something that I don't. It might be because I'm not in metal molds or whatever that may be. But again, keep in mind, I'm not trying to disprove science here. I'm trying to find out what is the best option for the quickest freezing of ice cubes for most production out of a homemade ice maker. And uh, once again, chilled water test absolutely wins by leaps and bounds. I'll stick it in for a little longer. We'll take another quick peek, but I think we can uh, determine our path forward right here after a couple days of testing. All right, it has now been over an hour and uh, we have pretty substantial results here. So hopefully the camera is picking it up. The uh, chilled tray, every single cube is frozen over. There's ice absolutely everywhere. And as far as the hot water side, nothing there. Tiny slivers of ice starting there. Nothing, 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 nothing. And on this very end, there is just starting to see tiny signs of ice. But every single one of these are frozen and starting to get decent ice in them. So at least as far as for what I'm looking for, the chilled water is how we're going to proceed forward. Looks like the way to go. Okay, let me show you what I got going on before I cover it up. So I have two 20 foot coils of plastic tubing run straight out of the water valves. I'm gonna go down into a cooler, cool down. I'm gonna keep this packed full of ice. I've also filled up a couple inches of water in the bottom because water uh, will absolutely transfer heat better than air. And eventually the ice is gonna melt and it's just gonna be super chilled water anyways, but I wanna be completely surrounding these tubes. They're gonna come up and out of a notch. I made the lid on this side and go straight into the ice makers. I'm gonna insulate that short, small section. This is the coldest, closest water I can get to these that I can think of. Uh, you definitely wouldn't want to chill on the back side of the water valves or back side of the filter. I want to get as close to the ice makers I can. And again, I'm gonna insulate them so uh, the room temperature shouldn't impact them too terribly much in between the cycle times of the ice maker pulling that water in. All right, the cooler is now packed full of ice. What I have to do now is purge these lines. They're full of air, um, so I need to trigger the water valves until water comes completely out. We'll wait about an hour, let everything settle off, uh, things get timed properly, then we'll start the test. Okay, so for now, the lines are purged. I have water all the way up to the uh, fill tubes. Those lines are wrapped in insulation. I have two 20 foot coals of plastic tubing buried in ice and submerged in a small amount of water for good uh, heat transfer. I've got my catch pans back in here, both fans running since we already know the results from the two fan test. And uh, what I'm gonna do is come out here since I've kind of disturbed everything, I'm gonna let this cool down for an hour. And if any ice that's made, I'm gonna dump it. Then I'm gonna start my 24 hour test. And to keep results even more consistent, some people say, hey, as you build up more ice every day, everything might become a little more efficient. Well, to take care of that, all ice produced tomorrow will be weighed, and then I'll use it to put right back in the cooler so we still have the same exact amount of ice in here. We'll run this test for a couple of days and uh, see if it's a worthwhile investment of time and money to maybe convert a mini fridge and copper coal over for continuous work and trouble-free cooling and chilling of incoming water. Okay, so it has been 24 hours and six minutes exactly. Run a little behind because I had camera difficulties here. 
Six minutes is going to make zero difference on this test because I've heard no ice drop. So this is the chilled water test. All the checking out we've been doing the last few days, again, is not for scientific reason to disprove theories that we all see on the internet. It's to find out what's going to work best for a homemade ice maker. So I, I want people to keep that in mind before I start getting ugly comments on, you need to watch this video, you need to go look at this effect, you know, boiling water, freezing quicker. I understand all that, but in my conditions, and this atmosphere, it sure seems like chilled water is the way to go. And a lot of y'all back that theory up. So I'm excited to see the ice, the production, see if it went up any. If it did, we're gonna move forward with building something. If it did not, or it's an extremely small amount, it might not be worth our while to go modify a mini fridge, bind copper and everything else. So let me shut up, let's weigh some ice. Y'all might be able to see these numbers, but I'll read them off to you. Okay, we're zeroed out. It's kind of easier to fill this off that, and I see it still teared out perfectly. 7.00 pounds. Okay, interesting results. 2.746. That puts us at 9.746 pounds. Yes, we have definitely seen an improvement. So I want to see how the ice looks in this cooler. It is just, and I mean just about melted, but still quite a bit on top. So the water should be nice and chilled and of even temperature. And what I'm going to do is dump all this ice in there after I remove some of this water. Just want to show y'all we still got a big block of ice in there. So I'm going to remove some of this water dump this ice in there so we keep results nice and consistent here. No thermal mass increase, no nothing. We're gonna run this test one more time for another 24 hours. All right, so it's been another 24 hours and I apologize for the bad lighting. I cannot open none of my doors. We're actually right in the middle of a tropical storm. It just come on shore. We're starting to catch the outer edge of it right now. So even a tropical storm won't stop my ice test. It's been 24 hours, like I said. This is the final test for the chilled water test. Let's see if production is up yet again. And uh, I'm gonna let the storm pass, come back out here in a few hours, crunch some numbers. We'll talk about some other things that you may see going on, go over the numbers and the details, because it's about to start pouring. There's no way you're gonna hear me. I may not be able to talk through the rest of this test, but I will show you all the numbers. One cube fell out, so I'll put one more in. 3.32. Almost identical to yesterday. 9.7 pounds. So we're definitely seeing an improvement. All right, so I'm glad we finished the test when we did. We actually wound up losing power, and that's been a popular question on the channel. What are we gonna do if we lose power? All this ice will turn the water in there. Well, we have generators, so that's no big deal, but if we're not here, there's actually a plug in here, and I can drain this, and I guarantee you it would be a day or two before this would actually wind up melting. If you've ever looked at deep, deep freezers, they're quite efficient. They hold their temperature for a very long period of time. So that wound up working out quite well today. We got our results in just before the tropical storm did knock our power out there. So I've got a lot of numbers to go over here. Everybody seems to enjoy the numbers. We've got a lot of data to crunch and I have some questions for y'all on how we want to move forward.
All right, so let's take a quick look back. We originally started with uh, no fans, two ice makers, 4.68 pounds. We decided to add a couple fans. We jumped up to 8.37 pounds in a 24 hour period. We also tested one fan, got it pretty much the exact same amount there. So airflow matters, how much, I don't know. We still have a lot of fan testing to do. Y'all have got some good ideas y'all sent me. So two fans up close. This is where I really wanna ask y'all something. Remember I had a flyer in that test. I wound up doing a three day test instead of a two day because I wound up having this just anomaly come along and had almost 10 and a half pounds produced in one day. And I really think I need to throw that flyer out. That was just such an unusual number. We've had nothing, nowhere near since that. So I want to throw that number out, redo my last test, because I did wind up getting three numbers out of that previous test. It was 8.89 pounds and 9.15, and then that wild flyer of like 10.4. So I think let's take the 8.89, 9.15 for an average of 9.2 pounds. And the last test that we done, that was two fans up close. It still made a, a difference over the fans being further back. But I think that's more accurate numbers we need to use moving forward. Um, and anytime I get a wildflower uh, flyer moving forward, I'm gonna throw it out, redo the test. I still don't know exactly what happened that day. So the chilled water test, we went from 9.02 pounds with two fans, no chilled water, to 9.74 pounds the first day, 9.7 pounds the second day. Almost identical results. I'm very happy with those numbers. So that gives us an average of 9.72 total pounds. So we made 0.7 more pounds going to chilled water, water versus not having chilled water. So what does that all mean? I also need to mention one other number. I've noticed that our kilowatt hour usage went up. For the couple days I was running the chilled water test, we were at 1.95 kilowatt hours for the day and 1.96. And I got to thinking, why would that go up? Well, it makes sense. The ice maker worked more, it produced more ice, the heating element kicked on more, the little timer kicked on more, uh, and we pumped more water into the freezer. It's probably a very small number, but the freezer had to work a little harder to cool down uh, you know, more a higher temperature coming in. 30 something degree, 40 degree water is still much higher than the zero degrees it's trying to get to. So all in all, our kilowatt hour usage went up slightly. I said all that because we're going to talk the numbers. People really enjoyed the numbers in the last video, although I made a mistake that I need to clear up now in that last video. I'm doing all my calculations on a dollar amount. So in the last video, for example, I said 0 0.02 two cents. Well, people took that as, you know, 0 0.02 of a cent. That was a dollar, I should have said, or two cents. So we're going to talk just straight in cents today to kind of clear everything up. So what does the new kilowatt hour usage mean? It costs me 22 cents a day now to run this versus 21 cents without the chilled water test. One cent a day increase. No big deal there. So our 20 pound usage, we've been looking at that number, it now costs me 45 cents to make 20 pounds with chilled water versus 44 cents to make 20 pounds without chilled water. Again, the electricity usage has went up slightly more than the production has, but we're talking one penny here. So we need to look at moving forward. We're seeing, what was it, a 7.7% 7 .7 increase uh, going from room temperature, or actually much higher than room temperature water, to chilled water. And one of y'all threw me a figure a while back and y'all almost hit the nail on the head. Y'all said if I can get down to 50 or less degrees that one of the big uh, ice maker manuals said I should see about an 8% increase. Well, I've seen 7.7, so that was almost spot on. Absolutely awesome number to tell me there. I had no idea it would be so accurate. So moving forward, this is kind of where I'm reaching out to y'all. Do we build a coil and put it in a mini fridge for a 7.7% .7 increase. I went ahead and crunched the numbers. That's 255 more pounds of ice in an entire year that runs around the clock and I never let it fill up. Chances are it's gonna fill up at some point. I'm gonna cut the ice makers off. So that's the best case scenario. Uh, if I crunch all the way down, that's 13 bags of ice at what it costs locally at $3 a bag. It's about $38 in ice a year that I save by going to chilled water. That's taking all the numbers in consideration. Now here's the other thing, I've done went out and priced quarter inch copper line, which is what I need for the ice makers. It'd be about $70 plus any other modifications needed to, for the mini fridge to go to chilled water. So it would actually take two years for that to pay me back for the increase that I'm getting. Doesn't really seem worth it at this point, especially when there's so many other tests to do where I think we can get almost some free production without having to go out and spend the money. But I'm still leaving that out there for y'all. I'd have to get about 70 plus dollars in copper um, 
And again, it would take me two years to get that back, crunching these numbers right here. So a lot of people like the cost per pound and the dollar figures. And a lot of people brought up in the comments, hey, you're not factoring in the cost of your equipment. You're exactly right. I talked about that in the first video, but I hadn't factored it in now. So let's, let's look at it this way. I'm saying it cost me around 44 to 45 cents to make a 20 pound bag, but how many bags does it take to pay for where I'm at right now, which is $369 in all the ice makers, the freezer, the fans were given to me by a viewer, but they're really not much money at all. If you looked on Amazon, I think they're $10 a piece, so they're very affordable. But it would take 123 bags at $3 a bag. Keep in mind, some places around charge $3.99 a bag, some are $2.50, but $3 is a very common price. So it'd take 123 bags. The energy it would uh, take to make those 23 bags, it would cost me an additional 18 bags in money figures here. So I'd have to make 141 bags to pay for all the equipment and to get a full break-even cost on the electricity to get to that. If I use two bags a week, which I absolutely do sometimes more, it would take me 17 months to pay this project off. If I use four bags a week, and I'll probably start using closer to that, the more ice I make, it takes seven months to pay this off, electricity and all. The other common question I'm getting is, I'm not factoring in cost of water here. I don't live in the city, I don't pay a high water bill. We have a pump and wheel out here, it's got an 80 gallon tank, it rarely kicks on, that's a ton of water. This doesn't pull very much a day at all, y'all can calculate the figures. And when it does actually kick that pump on, it runs for just a few seconds. I maybe could add one cent to a 20 pound bag total and say that we're up somewhere around 45 to 46 cent there. So I thought I'd throw those figures out. I'll try to put them at the end of this video. You can hit pause and watch them because that's been a very, very common question on these things that I'm not including, how I said my last figures and where am I at on total cost per pound. So right now, 44 to 45 cents per 20 pounds, not including equipment costs, but I did just give you that figure. It looks like my return on investment here is very short, a matter of months, maybe a year. I expect to get much more life out of the ice makers and especially the deep freezer than one year. So uh, it's fully gonna pay itself back, no doubt about that. All right, well, it's time to wrap this video up. Uh, we're gonna talk about a couple more things and our path moving forward or our plan there, what's gonna be the next test. But there's one thing you're probably noticing. Is this guy really wearing a got ice shirt? <laughs> yes, I am. This has been such a fun and popular project that I thought I would make something. So I went on Bonfire, designed a very simple shirt to kind of represent the project here. Uh, and you'll see I have a little note on that. All proceeds from this shirt, if anybody wants to go buy them, is gonna help fund the version 2.0 of the next project. So any special tools that y'all want me to use for measuring things, recording, uh, uh, all the way down to the cost of the ice makers, the freezer itself, yes, any funds from this is gonna go help support that project so we can kind of play and uh, get some really cool things to do that with. And I really do appreciate the support for anybody that goes and purchases these shirts. Plus, I like wearing it out in public so people can ask, does that shirt really say God Ice? Absolutely it does. It'll be a fun conversation. I can tell them exactly what the heck that means. Also designed one more shirt. This one I'm probably gonna keep around as long as the ice maker is popular and then we'll probably cancel this shirt. Um, this one right here, I really enjoy. A lot of people brought up one of my favorite words throughout this build. They said that I like to tinker or I'm a tinkerer. I absolutely am. I like to think, I like to design, and I like to tinker. So. I got the, uh, the thinking guy there with the gearhead icon, and it says thinker and tinker, and it's got our little Kelly's Country Life down there. Now here's the cool thing, some of y'all have already done went and found this shirt, and I've already ordered it, because I've kind of slipped it down in the description, but have yet to show y'all, because I just got my shirts in. So some of you are already well ahead of me. Thank y'all so much for that. Little things like that helps support the channel. Uh, all of the people that's been watching these videos, that's really helped. You can see I've got a lav mic now. It's just my first day testing this mic out. A lot of people said in the first video they couldn't hardly hear me. So your support for things like that, watching these videos, helps me get better camera equipment, microphones. It's very dark in here, hard to see. I've got a ton of DIY projects in the future. I've already got some uh, bay lights coming. So we're just gonna continue to invest in the channel, make things look better, make things more enjoyable, get some better tools around here to kind of show off, review, and talk about. So really do appreciate the support. It's been fun chatting with y'all. So where are we heading next? And we'll wrap this video up. I'm thinking insulation is going to be a really good project. We're getting an extremely hot wall here. I have noticed the top of the cooler is cold as well as the back. The back's actually getting so cold it's sweating. I'm losing a lot of efficiency there. 
Now, the two sides in front, they're hot. They need to shed heat. So we're gonna figure out how to uh, make the top and back a little more efficient. I think we're gonna run some fan test externally and try to shed some of the heat off of the cooler. A lot of people said that will make a really, really big difference. I think we can even get a little fan in there and get the compressor to be a little more efficient, get the heat off of that. We'll also wait and hear what y'all say about moving forward with the chilled water test. A 7.7% .7 increase is not insignificant, but when you look at the dollar figures, you're really at about break even. You just gotta determine, do you need that extra 250 pounds of ice a year? Could always use it. I just think there may be other things worth testing where we'll get more bang for our buck, so to speak. All right, here before long, we're also going to test thermal mass. I thinking what's the best way to test that well I think the best way is we've already got this more than half full right now so coming up here before long we'll just we'll run a couple day test see what we're getting keep things consistent empty this completely let it get back to zero degrees and then we'll have it completely empty so we'll do one extreme to the other to check thermal mass my gut says we're still gonna make a good amount of ice but the compressor is gonna cycle run more and our cost per pound is gonna go up so that's gonna be a fun one to test right there we're also gonna defrost this. A lot of people said all the frost that's building up, again, I'm opening this many times a day to record. A lot of people are saying that's really causing an issue and a lot not allowing the freezer to run efficiently. So we're gonna defrost it as well. We're gonna test all these. I've also got some really cool things coming I don't wanna talk too much about, but we're gonna do some ice tests too. I'm gonna get identical coolers. We're gonna go test store-bought ice. We're gonna test commercial freezer ice. We're gonna test tabletop ice maker ice because that's been one of the biggest requests I've had on the channel. Why are you not going to tabletop ice maker? And then we're gonna test this ice that's at zero degrees. Really looking forward to that one. Like I said, identical coolers, identical temperature situations. Let's see which one really is better. Chances are mine might not be, but I have a lot of theories in my head and so have y'all. All right, I can see this video is going on a bit long now. We're gonna wrap this up. I'm already testing. We'll get you another video out in a week or two. Y'all keep sending me in your comments. Thank you for the support.